going to need a few more days to, to check the, the, the bottom of, of the canal, make sure that things are okay, there are no blockages. Then you will need probably another 10 days to get this entire uh, backlog of ships passing through. But then you have also a secondary problem, delays that are going to happen when they arrive into their destination ports. Because there is an overwhelming, of course, you know, uh, a lot of them lost their slots for for uh, for uh, arriving. The costs also uh, apply to um, the you know today, for example, one of the big costs. On, I mean, companies who, who produce these things are happy, but containers, for example, are very very rare now around the world because most of them are still stuck on on the ships. Uh, about 25, some say 30% of global shipping uh, of goods passes through, through the Suez Canal. So you can imagine the major delays. Then you have the addition of some of the ships uh, opting to go through the Horn of Africa, uh, which adds another 10 to 12 days uh, in, uh, of, of, of uh, travel. And that, of course, consumes more fuel, adds to the cost of everything. It's still, you know, so the impact is going to be significant, and we're going to see it slowly uh, appearing over the next probably few months. So that as we saw how this incident really highlighted some of the pressure points <laughs> in the supply chain when it comes to shipping, um, are you expecting any changes, perhaps any perhaps more shifts to, to air as an alternative? I think so. I mean, this is sort of, like what we experienced last year uh, during the pandemic when everybody realized that uh, the greatest uh, percentage of products are coming from china it was sort of a, a monopoly and uh, when when china closed down and then that Im impact of pandemic uh, you know global trade sort of began to change into creating various hubs of ma manufacturing so you're not relying on just china for the bulk of, of products I think we're going to see that also now. Um, the costs are very significant, uh, and, and therefore, I, I believe probably shipping and transportation and logistics companies will begin to think through uh, uh, other alternatives uh, to mitigate any risks in the future. And you talked about shipping containers, about the shortage that we saw really start to become more prevalent last year, and we're still seeing this year. Why are we seeing this, and what are the economic consequences of having this shortage? Well, I mean, uh, the containers are the, the ones that contain all these products. So when you have a shortage, as anything in, in, in economics, uh, the prices go up. Uh, prices of leasing these containers, prices uh, in terms of also shipping, uh, so that, of course, adds to the cost of the products you are shipping, uh, because shipping, including container costs, are calculated as a part of the price of these products. So then do we know if and when some of these costs are going to be passed on to the consumers? Uh, that, we're going to probably see it in the coming slowly in the, you know developing over the next few weeks and months uh, don't forget that uh, a lot of these things have already you know uh, uh, passed on to probably insurers of these ships and containers but uh, as the delays become more and more acute because of the, the amount of level i mean it's an artery basically, right? So you have, once that major artery closes and you have this huge backup, uh, then when, when you let it go, you're gonna need some time to do that. And then, as I said, when they arrive in the destinations, it's gonna be much more significant also to wait some more. All of that is gonna be accumulated uh, in terms of, and you have also some of these ships that all of a sudden decided or had to go through the uh, Horn of Africa instead of, you know, cutting short their, their, their trips from uh, uh, the Far East mainly uh, and, and Europe. Uh, some, there are some, of course, uh, countries and, and, uh, that got some, you know, they can take advantage of this. For example, in North Africa or Nigeria, uh, where they produce also oil in significant uh, quantities, but they don't have to worry about going through the Suez Canal. I think the market, especially in Europe and the United States, might be now a little bit more friendly towards importing at least energy products. 
from these countries as a mitigating factor uh, for any future problems in the canal.